everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahee. In this is the show, we talk about movies, TV, sci fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon. And contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. The weekend is almost upon us. Yesterday was New Comics Day. Hope you went out and grabbed a couple of goodies for that. I have been sitting here this morning going through my comics, and I'm not quite done yet, so I'm not ready to give a bunch of reviews as far as what I recommend. I will say, though, as an X-Men fan, go out, pick up X-Men Red, number one. Uh, I just read through it. I really enjoyed it. It's the return of the original Jean Grey leading her own team. And it's kind of interesting to where she takes the smartest minds in the world, puts them all in one room, and then does some kind of telepathic ability where she's trying to mind meld all of them together to come up with a way for basically world peace is what she does. Then she goes to the UN, throws out her ideas, and then stuff happens. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but let's just say an old X-Men villain is back to spoil Jean's plan. And it's just a good X-Men issue, so I recommend going checking that out. As an X-Men fan, I enjoyed it. Now we've got a lot of stuff to go through. A lot of good, good stuff have come out in these last couple days. Luckily, I'm probably going to do a show today and tomorrow, so I should have a chance to get through it all. They just released the first teaser trailer for the Venom film starring Tom Hardy that comes out in October. I watched it. I'm not ready to give my thoughts on it yet. I'm going to save that for tomorrow's show because there's other stuff that's come out in the last couple days that I'd much rather talk about. So I'll talk about Venom tomorrow as well as I'm probably going to talk about the Jessica Jones trailer that dropped tomorrow too. So saving that. I got stuff to catch up on because I still haven't talked about the rest of the Super Bowl trailers that came out on Sunday. Now there's four I just want to briefly talk about. Uh, Westworld Season 2. I started Westworld. I watched the first couple episodes on HBO. And after a couple episodes, I got it. It was an AI story. I knew the robots were becoming self-aware. They're going to rise up. I didn't finish it, but I talked to my friend Maggie, who did finish it. And she really likes the show. She said, yeah, that's basically what happens at the end. That's basically what season two is going to be about. I get it. I get the intrigue. I get why people like it. But to me, it just seems like an old concept that's been done over and over again. So I'm still not going to catch up and watch Westworld Season 2, but if you like it, cool. Hope you enjoyed that trailer. Another one people are buzzing about, Mission Impossible Fallout. Give me a break, guys. Okay, I haven't liked a Mission Impossible movie since the first one. Tom Cruise, I think he does a lot of safe stuff that really isn't that great. The Mission Impossible franchise being one of them. And from the trailer, it looks like this is going to be exactly what the last four films have been, which is... Ethan Hunt is disavowed from the government, and they're hunting him, and he's got his rogue mission, and blah, blah, blah. It's the exact same stuff. If you haven't checked out the Mission Impossible Honest trailer, go online on YouTube and do that. It pretty much breaks down how all the Mission Impossible movies are pretty much the same, and I totally agree. This one looks like it's not going to be indifferent. I think it's cool that Tom Cruise does a lot of his own stunts, and he gets injured, and he's willing to do that. That's great. I respect him as an artist, but these films... Who cares? More importantly, I'm more a little sour on it too. Henry Cavill, the mustache, the Justice League controversy, all that stuff. All I gotta say is that mustache better be imperative to this plotline to why they wouldn't let Cavill shave it off for Justice League reshoots. Uh, next up, one I do kind of want to talk about that I was kind of okay with was Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now this is the sequel, of course, to the Jurassic World film that reinvigorated the franchise with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. We've gotten one trailer already. This is our second trailer. And all i got to say is at the beginning of this trailer, why is the dinosaur in the little, little girl's room? I don't get that. What's the significance of that? I mean, I like how they're slowly playing like a piano version of the Jurassic Park theme, but I don't get why this dinosaur is attacking the little girl. It just doesn't really make too much sense to me. From the first trailer that I'm really looking excited to is, of course, the continued relationship between Chris Pratt's character and his raptor pet, Blue. Um, from the looks of this trailer, it looks like he's, you know, 
befriended Blue. They have that understanding, almost like a guardian dog for him in that sense. So that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that part of the story being in there. Other than that, you just get a lot of action in this trailer. I get it. They're talking about the dinosaurs and what they should do with them. It looks like they're bringing them to the mainland, which, honestly, we've seen that. It's called Jurassic Park The Lost World. It didn't work out so well. I don't want to see that again, but maybe, again, they've got a new twist on it. Jurassic World, the thing I liked about it compared to, say, Jurassic Park Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, it did give a twist to the Jurassic Park franchise. I'm hoping this still continues that and gives us a new angle to look at the dinosaurs with. But of course, the other big trailer besides the solo trailer that dropped during the Super Bowl was the Avengers Infinity War trailer. It was only a 30 second spot, so it wasn't that much, which I'm glad because honestly, they don't need to waste their money on this film on this spot. Yeah, it shows people, hey, you got the Infinity War coming, people, but they didn't go into much detail about the plot, which they still haven't from the first trailer. But most of us have been watching the Marvel Studio films. We know what's coming. We know what it's all about. So I'm glad they just took this kind of opportunity just to remind us what's on the horizon. In this trailer, I felt like we got a lot of like shots of people together. You got Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange together. Then you got uh, Cap and Vision and Scarlet Witch together. That one shot, you got Thor, Rocket, and... Group together another shot so it really shows that the entire mcu is coming together for this film a couple of cool ones you got spider-man up in space i think it's that kind of gate thing we saw in the first trailer and maybe this is just an extension of that in it he's wearing his regular costume not the iron spider costume which looks like he's going to get in this movie from tony now it's still a lot of people's theory and mine as well that after the venom movie is announced and then we get rumors that tom holland is on the set that the venom film will tie into the mcu given that you know spider-man is sony and he's in there and you gotta tie venom into spider-man somehow at least that's my theory to it so it's a lot of people's theories that in this film peter parker is going to go into space and encounter the black costume or the symbiote in the comic books how he got the black suit was he was injured in a battle during Secret Wars, and the black suit came to him and kind of repowered him. In the first trailer for Infinity War, we see Thanos basically beating the crap out of Peter, and it kind of teases, I mean, it could be just the way they shot it, but it looks like Tony is holding Peter's hand, and Peter's, you know, in really bad shape. Maybe he gets comes in contact with the black goo, gets powered up again, brings it to Earth. I don't know, that's just a theory. The more I saw the Venom trailer today, I don't think maybe that's the way they're going with it, but I'll get more into that tomorrow. But in any event, this 30-second spot was really cool, just showing everyone together. Of course, you got the look at Cap's shield that he gets from Takala, and, you know, how he's going to use it, I don't know. I hope he paints it up, maybe look a little more Captain America-ish. Uh, but you do have the shot of him with Black Widow, and, of course, Black Widow, whether she's blonde or redhead just is hot as hell but any event a lot of cool shots a lot of action shots to let us know this is going to be a big action film which is what we are expecting and then at the end we get thanos very close quick shot seen in there his little smirk but also you see the details and how well that marvel studios did with turning josh brolin into this CGI purple character. You can see Josh Brolin in the face. I think it's great. He's got the three scars. How he got the three scars, whether it's be Cap Shield or Takala or something else, I'm looking forward to that story. Maybe it was none of them. Maybe it was something else. Maybe an injury he got a long time ago. But in any event, Avengers of Any War comes out May 4th. I'm looking forward to it. All right, and I have rambled on for too long about those Super Bowl trailers, more than I thought I would have, but i got to get them out of the way. So, moving on to the actual story for today. It was announced by Lucasfilm on Tuesday that Game of Thrones show creators and showrunners David Beninoff and D.B. Weiss are working on a Star Wars trilogy for Lucasfilm that is going to be separate from the trilogy that Ryan Johnson is helming and the ongoing episodic Skywalker saga. 
No release window has been announced for the films, and it's unclear if they'll be in the Star Wars Story anthology film slate, such as Rogue One and Solo, A Star Wars Story. The duo will set to start working on the Star Wars trilogy once they've finished up the final season of Game of Thrones, which is set to come out next year. Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy said that Weiss and Beninoff are, quote, some of the best storytellers working today. Their command of complex characters, depth of story, and richness of mythology will break new ground and boldly push Star Wars in ways I find incredibly exciting. Tuesday afternoon, I was at my in-laws. My daughter wanted to play with her cousin, so I dropped her off. Sitting there, just, you know, hanging out, and I see this story come up. And I swear to God, the inside of me burst with joy. Anyone who listens to this show or knows me knows I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. And of course, Star Wars is my life. Combine those two together. Oh my God. I am so excited for this. Weiss and Benenoff have been doing such a good job on Game of Thrones. Now the first inclination is that these two are going to be doing kind of an Old Republic style. People have wanted an Old Republic film announcement or live-action television show announcement, and everyone's agreed they want it in a style of Game of Thrones. If you haven't seen the videos on YouTube where people take fight sequences from Game of Thrones and add lightsabers to them, it's amazing. It's awesome. Go check it out. But that's people's first inclination that – They're going to be doing some kind of Old Republic-style trilogy, which I would be fine with. But they don't have to be just that. The reason Game of Thrones works so well is the characters. It's a deep mythology, great characters, which you can credit George R.R. Martin for. But as the show goes on, it goes further away from Martin's books and becomes more what Beninoff and Weiss are envisioning of it. And the seasons are getting better and better. Like this last season of Game of Thrones, I think is probably my favorite. And it's because Beninoff and Weiss are doing such a good job crafting the characters, making us care about them, letting us live in Westeros, in that world. If they take kind of that story or that kind of depth and put it in their Star Wars trilogy, I'm in. You know, their ability to tell this story and make us care about the Game of Thrones characters is amazing and if you take even a fraction of that and put it in a star wars story i think it's going to be awesome i'm just so excited for this news again old republic style would be awesome but i can also see him doing something else and this also kind of has me thinking about what the future of star wars is because some people have criticized that maybe lucasfilm doesn't have an overall idea For Star Wars, much like how Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige has an overall idea as to where everything's going. Like Feige announced he's got like the next 20 movies planned. And maybe that Lucasfilm is just playing it all by ear. I think they have a rough idea what they're doing. And I think recent announcements have kind of set that bar up. You've got this trilogy. You've got the Ryan Johnson trilogy. And it says they still want to do the episodic films, which... I'm not sure about that really. I think after episode 9 and you kill off Kylo Ren and the Skywalkers are gone, I think that should be the end of the episodes, but that's just me. And then of course there was an announcement by Bob Iger that Disney and Lucasfilm are working on several Star Wars live action shows or animated shows. And they're going to premiere some of them on the Disney streaming service that's coming up. So we have quite a bit of Star Wars on the way, which again, as a Star Wars fan, I'm excited for Some people have criticized that maybe we're going to be oversaturated with Star Wars. And to that I say, well, let's look at the MCU people. We get three MCU movies a year on top of several television shows and animated series. Are we oversaturated by Marvel? I don't think so. I mean, I haven't heard anybody complain about it as long as they're different. As long as the Benenoff and Weiss trilogy is a totally separate thing from what Ryan Johnson is doing – I think you're fine, you know, uh, say Benenoff and Weiss doing Old Republic stuff, but Johnson does an Underworld movie, you know, about bounty hunters and stuff like that. As long as they're different enough, I think we'll be okay, much like, you know, Iron Man movies are different from Captain America movies, which are different from Daredevil, which are different from 
Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sucks. But in any event, as long as we're getting some different flavors in the same world, I think that's fine. You know, much like, you know, Star Wars Rebels is different from Clone Wars, which is different from The Last Jedi, which is going to be different from Solo. As long as we have the same world but different flavors, I think we're okay. I just hope whatever plans they might have had for future Star Wars movies or television shows haven't been derailed from the divisiveness of The Last Jedi. Ryan Johnson really took a chance on a lot of bold things in that film, which I personally enjoyed. Some people did not. But you got to say it was different from normal Star Wars. Much like how The Force Awakens was very similar, this one took chances and changed up the game. I like that. Some people don't like that. I get it. And hopefully Solo will engulf us back into the Star Wars universe, take us on a fun adventure to where the fan base can be reunited again. All right, guys. Well, I am already out of time. I yammer on just way too much, I swear. I didn't even get to the Deadpool trailer. I didn't get to the Jessica Jones trailer. And then, of course, tomorrow, I got to hit up the Venom trailer as well. So it's an action-packed episode tomorrow. But now it's time for you guys to fire back. What was your favorite Super Bowl trailer? Hit me up. Let me know. Did the Jurassic World trailer get you? Did the Avengers trailer get you? Are you as unexcited about the new Mission Impossible and Westworld season as I am? And then finally, what do you think Benenoff and Weiss are cooking up for Star Wars? Do you think we're getting oversaturated Star Wars? Let me know. Dayspringdiscussions.gmail.com You can mainly find me on the Facebook group and Twitter account. That's going to be it, guys. Until next time, may the Force be with us all. Mm -hmm.